Hey guys, I'm back with another video. My name's Jason and thanks for watching. Today I want to talk about this brand new fridge that's just released on the market. This is Gotur's C18, 18 liter, 12 volt compressor fridge. Gotur sent this out for review so that I could check out all the fridge's features, test the power consumption, and give a good pros and cons list at the end of the video so you know if it's something that you want to buy. Now there's three great reasons why you'd want to go out and buy a 12 volt compressor fridge. First off, they work great in emergencies. If your power's out, you can run this off a battery source and it's super efficient. Another great reason to have one is if you have an RV and you're looking for additional space, you can purchase one of these and add to your existing refrigeration needs. And the third reason to purchase one of these fridges is so that you don't have to have any ice while camping. Imagine just being able to go camping and not have to go back to the store or gas station every couple days to get ice. With a 12 volt compressor fridge, a solar panel, and a battery, you can literally run the fridge forever and have that food fresh in your fridge and not worry about it spoiling. Okay, well enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look at this fridge. So let's go ahead and look at the specs of the Gotur C18W. The total capacity is 19 quarts or 18 liters. It weighs 24 pounds or about 11 kilograms. It uses the Chinese Wajun ZH25G compressor. When at idle, the power draw is about 1.5 watts when the compressor is not running. When the compressor is running on eco mode, it pulls about 31 watts. And when the compressor is set to max mode, it pulls 49 watts. I'll provide a more in-depth power consumption numbers later in the video, so stick around if you're interested in seeing how this fridge performs against other fridges I've tested. The dimensions of the fridge are 23 inches wide, a little under 12 inches deep, and a little over 11 inches tall. So when you open the box, you'll see the fridge itself. You get an owner's manual, two extra rubber feet for the bottom of the fridge, and you get the extension cord that allows you to power the fridge on DC power. This fridge does not come with an AC to DC adapter, so you will have to purchase that extra if you want to run this fridge off of AC power in your house or in a hotel. Let's go ahead and talk about the control panel for this fridge. It's a really nice touch screen, and I'll just go into some of the features that it offers. The first thing that you notice right here is this sticker that says if the fridge has been inverted, you want to wait 12 hours before turning on the compressor. Looking at the bottom, there's a USB charging port for your phone, and I think that's great to have that built in. Looking at the display, you can see it shows the current temperature, the voltage, which is awesome for a fridge like this to have a voltmeter, and it has your battery protection levels and your compressor settings. To change the settings on the fridge, you just push the plus button to change the temperature, and you can go up and down to the desired temperature you want. When it stops flashing, you know it's set. To change eco or max mode, you just tap the setting button, and then you push it to go to max mode and push it back to go to eco mode, whatever one you want to do. To change the battery protection settings, you press and hold the setting button. And then you can go to high, low, or medium battery protection. You can read in the owner's manual a little bit more about that so you can know why or what setting you want to use. Overall, it's very simple to use. And what's nice is that because it's a touchscreen, it offers a self-locking feature so that if a kid comes around and starts pushing all over it, it won't change the settings. Uh, if the lock turns on, you just push the unlock button for three seconds and it'll unlock the fridge. You'll see a little lock icon in the top corner and it's really easy to use. So here's a closer look at the display. It's showing the inside of the fridge is 30 degrees. The voltage coming in is 14.6. It's set to eco mode and the battery protection is set at medium. You can also see in the bottom right hand corner there that there's a lock. And to unlock it, you just go ahead and press and hold the setting button and you'll see that go away. Then you can just go ahead and make any changes that you want to the temperature. I like to have it set at 32 degrees and then you let it stop flashing and it's good to go. Taking a look at the top of the fridge and the lid, you can see they painted this really nice gunmetal metallic glossy paint. I love the two-tone look because you have this gunmetal color and then everywhere else is this flat black. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. Looking at the bottom of the lid, you can see they have this really nice seal just to keep it airtight. It has a recommended temperature for food that you may have inside the fridge and also some model information. The lid is insulated. You can see it has the plug here to fill up the insulation and it has this metal stay so that the lid will not fall backwards all the way. Just gives it a really nice sturdy feel. Okay, looking inside the fridge, you can see that I have a two liter bottle here. So it does fit a two liter bottle laying down. Um, I also have a bunch of small Gatorades just to show you how well this would fit. It would easily fit 10 of these um, on this side, a two liter bottle there. One really nice feature about this fridge is it actually has a metal liner on the inside. Having a metal liner is actually 
uh, really good to cool the fridge down as fast as possible. Uh, the other benefit to having a metal liner is that um, the evaporative coil that goes around the outside um, it has direct contact with the metal, so the cold air comes into the fridge much more efficiently. So, uh, kudos for GoTour putting a metal liner inside the fridge. A lot of these cheaper budget fridges have uh, plastic liners, so it's pretty good to see a metal liner in here. One test that I like to do uh, during these fridge tests is see if a milk jug can fit with the lid closed. And uh, this fridge is just a little tad short, uh, so the milk jug will not fit. What you'll want to do is make sure the lid's on nice and tight, and then you'll just have to lay it on its side. Uh, when it's laying on its side, it does fit um, the two liter bottle next to it, so you can fit a milk jug and a two liter bottle. So still quite a bit of room inside the fridge, so you can see how much fits in here. My one complaint about a lot of these fridges, including this one, is that the temperature display on the touchscreen is not fully accurate sometimes and it actually shows a different temperature than what's inside the fridge. So what I recommend is that anybody that has one of these 12 volt compressor fridges, they go out and they purchase one of these thermometers. This is a refrigerator thermometer so uh, let me go ahead and show you a little bit closer. Um, as I hold on you'll see the temperature go up because they're very sensitive. But uh, you'll see that there's a refrigerator area between 32 and 40 degrees and that's where you want to have your food to keep it safe. Anywhere in the warm area, so 40 degrees and above, will actually spoil your food. And then it has a section for freezing and deep freezing. So uh, very useful to have one of these in your fridge. Then you'll know the exact temperature. Uh, you won't have to depend on what the display is showing. You just see this in here. If you want it to go lower, set the temperature a few degrees lower in the fridge and you're good to go. So here's my favorite part about testing these fridges is finding out the power consumption on each model. This GoTour actually performed very well. Let's go ahead and show you how I get these numbers. So right here I have a kilowatt meter that measures the total kilowatt hours over a period of time. And so I have the fridge plugged into this using my own AC to DC adapter and it tracks the power usage. I actually test this fridge at two different power levels, a 70 degree ambient test and a more realistic 85 degree ambient test for like a summer usage. Let's go ahead and start with the fridge power consumption testing at 70 degrees ambient. I ran the fridge for about 46 hours. Over that time, the fridge pulled 553 watt hours. If we divide that over the duration of the test, which was 46 hours, we get an average of 12 watts power draw. That translates to about 0.96 amps average at 12.5 volts. So I've had a ton of questions about my power usage results uh, in the past. So many people comment on my video saying, hey, the, the compressor uses 31 watts. Your numbers are horrible. Your calculations suck. Well, let's just take a second to explain how this works. The compressor does not run 100% of the time. Just like right now, it's plugged in, the compressor is not running. So it's only pulling 1.5 watts right now. When the compressor turns on, it pulls 31 watts on eco mode. So if you have this on eco mode and the compressor only runs 33% of the time, which is pretty normal on one of these fridges, you're going to get a really good efficient number. So the results for this was 12 watts at 70 degree ambient. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 85 degree ambient test results and we'll see how much more power it uses. So for the 85 degree ambient test, I ran the fridge for a total of 33 hours. During that time, the fridge pulled 761 watt hours. And if we divide that over the duration of the test, which was 33 hours, we get an average of 23 watts power draw. That translates to about 1.84 amps average at 12.5 volts. So looking at these two different tests, the 70 degree versus the 85 degree, you can see as we jump up about 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, the fridge actually doubles its power usage. And this is pretty normal for all these fridges. So sitting in a hot car at 105 degrees, the compressor is going to be running 100% of the time and you're going to be getting a lot more power usage. So you want to make sure your car is parked in the shade, maybe you have the window cracked. Just try to keep your car as cool as possible if you're going to be running this inside a car. There's just a couple tips on how to keep this running the best as it can. If you're looking for a way to run this fridge, you can use a portable battery like this. This is something you can purchase um, right off the shelf, or you can build your own battery pack. I have two different battery packs that are very similar. One uses lead acid and one uses lithium iron phosphate. Uh, I'll have both those videos linked in the description so you can check those out as well. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the power usage on this GoTour fridge. It's just right around uh, par for all the other fridges around this size. Looking at the side of the fridge, you can see it has these nice built-in handles. I love that it's flush so you don't have to 
take up any extra room. A lot of fridges have external handles that take up additional room, so it's great to have a built-in handle, and it gives you plenty to grab onto. Because this fridge is so light, being 24 pounds, um, this handle works perfectly for this. Looking at the other side of the fridge, you can see it has these large cooling vents. Uh, some fridges have very small cooling vents, and I feel that it, it actually uh, doesn't allow the fridge to cool off enough. So kudos for Goter planning ahead and making theirs have these large cooling vents. Uh, there's actually a fan on that on this side here that blows the air through, and the hot air is dispersed on this side. Uh, one thing to note, if you are packing this fridge in a really tight area, you do not want to have like a duffel bag or a blanket right up next to this. You got to give it some space so the fridge can cool off. The compressor uh, won't overheat as long as you have some space here. You can see we have another handle on this side, and then you have the DC plug for the fridge that plugs in right down there. One thing I like to do during my reviews is demonstrate the sound of the compressor and the fan while running. So let me go ahead and put my microphone right up next to the compressor. You can hear what it sounds like. Now I'm gonna move it about three feet away so you can hear what it sounds like about three feet away. Overall, the compressor is pretty quiet on this fridge. However, the fan is running at a higher RPM than what I'm used to, so the fan is actually a little bit louder than the compressor, but uh, it's just something to know about and to be aware of that the fan does run quite a bit high and you can hear that over the compressor. That's basically everything that I wanna cover about this 12 volt compressor fridge. Let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons and sum up the video. Let's get the cons out of the way. I like talking about the negative stuff first. So the first thing I wanna talk about is it didn't come with an AC to DC adapter. So you're really limited on only running this on a 12 volt socket. If you had the AC to DC adapter, you could run this in your house or in the car on the go. So it's basically just a portable fridge. It's not something you could use in your house. There are adapters available you can purchase, but you just have to spend extra money to do it. The second thing that I don't like about this fridge is that the fan is slightly louder than any other fridge that I've tested. It's either running at a higher voltage or it's just a really big fan. You can actually hear the fan over the compressor I don't think it's loud enough to keep someone up at night, but it's just a loud fan. I don't know if you'd really consider this a con because a loud fan means that it's running faster and cooling off the compressor more, but I just thought that it's more of a con than a pro. Let's go ahead and talk about the pros about this fridge. The first pro I wanna talk about is the price. It's super affordable, it's an entry level fridge coming in at $199 with the $30 off coupon you can get through Amazon. There's not much out there that you can buy for this price with this good build quality, so that's great. The next pro on my list is the good build quality. There's a lot of features in this that I really like. The first build quality thing that sticks out to me is the magnetic lid, and it really holds down the lid the perfect amount. The next thing is the metal liner. We've already talked about that. I think it's great for efficiency and cooling. And the third thing is the included voltmeter on the display. Many fridges don't have voltmeter, and it's really good to know what the current voltage is. You know if the fridge is turning off because of low voltage, or if your battery's getting too low. The final good thing that I like about this fridge is it's super efficient. It stacks up with the same efficiency as all the other fridges I've tested, so it's a good thing there. So overall, you guys can choose between these pros and cons if it's something that you wanna go out and buy. I personally think it's a great small uh, portable 12 volt compressor fridge, and I really like it. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Really appreciate GoTur sending this out for review. Give me a thumbs up, guys, if you like the content. I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.